Okay, so what we're going to do is start literally from the beginning. From when you get this email from Dave uh, with your delivery for Emoji Pro. You should have an email that looks exactly like this. And what you're going to do is click the link, download Emoji Pro version 1.6 if you haven't done so already. And also download the placeholder website that Dave has created for everybody. After you've downloaded it and put Emoji Pro in its own folder or wherever you want to put it on your computer, it usually goes in the downloads folder. And then what I do is I create an Emoji folder on my desktop so I can easily access everything. You'll see you'll have a folder with a little zipper on it. That's a zipped file. So all you do is you right click it. And I have 7-zip and I either extract straight to here or I extract to the folder name itself. Now that determines on whether what's going, whether there's a folder inside already or whether there's files inside. So I'll double click it and look and see if there's something inside and there is. So if it just looks like this, I'll probably just click, right click, 7-zip, and then I'll do extract here. If it looks like this, there's a bunch of things. I don't want a bunch of things to go into a folder unorganized. So if it's in that case, I would right click, 7-zip, extract to a folder name. That way everything just stays organized for me. So that's what you're going to do with your Moji Pro, and then you'll have this folder here. Inside of the Moji Pro, you're going to see a README file. Double click that, open it, and read it thoroughly. Dave spends a lot of time to make sure you know what's updated. He gives you a lot of notes in here on what's going on. Read this stuff. It is a lot, but you're working with a very complicated piece of software and you want to make sure you understand what's going on. Okay, So read the readme files and understand what's going on. After that you generally just run the Emoji Pro installer and follow the steps. What I did was I downloaded a fresh version of the placeholder website so you can see exactly how I do this. So I'll open it, see if there's something inside. There is. I'll right click 7-zip, and then I'll extract here to my desktop. It extracts, and you see the file folder is named Moji Demo. Now I go in there, you'll see a README First file. Open it, read it. Again, there's a lot of information in here. Now this README file helps you get everything set up so that you can start doing runs as fast as possible. He, Dave went into great detail here for you such as move the extracted folder emoji demo to your C drive so when I extracted it I have this folder here emoji demo it's telling me to move it to the C drive so I come over here and I click on the C drive and I already have it there so it emoji demo emoji demo step one's done if you already have an earlier version of the emoji demo you may be asked whether you want to merge. Say yes. I'm not merging mine because I have a bunch of edited files in there and I don't want to overwrite them. What Dave does here is he tells you how to create a shortcut if you want quick access to this particular V2 folder if you're going to be working with it a lot. Instead of clicking on computer and then C drive and then going to Moji demo and then going to V2 and then going to whatever file you can just create a shortcut to the desktop by right clicking send to desktop and create a shortcut that's just an easy way just trying to help you save time there step one if you want your excel file to read what's going on you have to change the delimiter the list delimiter inside of your settings and Dave goes right here and he tells you exactly how to do that he tells you hit start go to the control panel I'm just gonna do this right here with you so you can see it on the control panel he says region and language clock language and region this last tab name changes slightly okay no big deal oops let me move this a little bit so we can see both folders here once in there select the additional settings buttons on the formats tab additional settings 
Now you can change the list separator from the default comma to a pipe. And you see here, list separator, and I have it as a pipe already. Okay? And then after that, it tells you exactly where the pipe is on your computer. Once you're done, you change it to a pipe, you click OK, click OK, you can exit out of your control panel, and you're done with that part. And literally just go down the list here for each one of his steps. Step 2 talks about he's giving you access to use his FTP. He gave the information, the host, the username, and the password for that particular folder. And I'll show you that right now in FileZilla. Okay, the program that I use is FileZilla. It's free. I'll have a link for you in the resource box. Let me write that down. And FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol, which means that you take the files from your computer, which is going to be shown here on the left-hand side of FileZilla, and you're going to upload them to your website or your hosting account, wherever your domain is. And that's going to be shown on the right-hand side over here. Dave is giving you access to his if you want to test some runs up and show you how to do this. Up top you'll see the host, which he gives you. You'll see the username. You can just copy that and paste and password. And he even gives you the port. Just type in 21 and then click quick connect. And you will see on the right hand side here everything is loaded up. This is the moji samples.com website everything that's on here so if you were to go to moji samples.com slash backlink dash program you would see what's inside that folder and, and the only exception there is if there's a blank index page so that you don't see it um, that's FTP okay step four Dave is talking about your profiles that he gave with the placeholder website and he's just giving you a warning that if you do happen to change the profile names it's possible that the URL breakdown is going to get erased and then you'll have to recreate it manually and he tells you why and then he explains that you should just leave it alone because this part of the process the profile names the folder names that are on your computer for the placeholder website don't really have any effect on the actual output of the run and I'll explain that right now when you load a profile if you just click load and you find it on your computer right it's on my desktop the emoji demo v2 full profile stack you load a profile you'll see that the paths are already created so when you put the emoji demo folder where it belongs on your C drive it's already there if you hit browse, it goes right to that spot, okay, and it pulls the index file. Same with the vars file, it goes into the C drive, demo folder, V2, and then there's the vars, right? And target root folder, this is where, when you hit the process button, where the output is going to be on your computer, okay? put this where you want right now we have it in emoji pro runs folder this is the URL breakdown meaning when you hit run the URL structure that gets created emoji samples are calm Tulsa landscaping slash what this is slash test away in Adelanto California slash choose best zero testing business method and then this blank means that it's the end, so it'll automatically put a .html for you. Finishing the link. One very important thing that you need to know about doing your URL breakdown is these slashes here need to be the forward slash, like this. They need to look like this on here so that when it creates the URL, It'll actually switch it around and put the correct one for the linking structure. So just make sure you're doing that. If you get an error, it's probably because you put the wrong slash in.
Now you have domain name, you have the file count, all this stuff, FTP, I'm actually going to go over in a later video. Okay. If you want to test a run without uploading, all you have to do is uncheck this box and then it'll process right here on your computer and then you can look into the folder and check it out and make sure that everything is looking okay. Then you can do a quick little test, upload it, make sure that the uploading part works. In step 5, Dave created a backup folder for us just in case anything happens if you screw up or you did, you did something you didn't plan on doing. All you have to do is go into the V2 and related files and instructions and backup original files. Everything's right there for you. In step 6, Dave goes on to tell you that when you produce a run, everything gets processed on your computer first and then will be uploaded if you're uploading with Moji Pro. And it just tells you that if you don't have a Moji samples folder, the first run that you do will automatically create it for you just by default. Step 7 is talking about the URL paths that you create inside of Moji Pro with the URL structuring. If you create a very long URL, it is possible that the character count is too many and and FTP will just delete the whole entire thing. It won't even upload. And what we're talking about is over here on this is your URL or your folder structure. Right now it's not too long. Don't forget this is part of your URL structure, okay? then you add all this so if you start adding a whole bunch if you fill it out right or let's you know what let's do it like this if you take some of these big ones and add them, those are all long characters right those are all long characters so you add all this to the domain name and it's too long it's just too many characters. It doesn't even make sense, honestly. So try to keep your URL structure to a decent size. In step 8, Dave goes on to tell you that uniques are created within Moji Pro. So you don't have to do the old way of processing UMass and processing uniques within Excel anymore. It's just automatically processed within the software, which is super cool. So if you don't have the toolbar, you would go to mojicrew.com toolbars, download the newest version of the toolbar, install it, and just install the trial version because you don't need the full working version anymore. Step 9 is talking about a tip for you that you don't necessarily have to delete all your files that you uploaded if you make a mistake. And it's because when you upload new pages into the same folder, new sitemaps are created, so they overwrite the old sitemap. And if you only point to the new sitemap, so sitemap.html, then the old pages, the first hundred or thousand that you uploaded, are broken because those are on sitemap1. If there's no link to sitemap1, there's no link to those pages, so those pages are kind of just there and they're not going to hurt you in any way. Step 10 is letting you know to go to the forum and register and then to let him know your username so that he can verify that you purchased and then get you inside of the forum. Inside of the forum there's going to be a lot more tips and tricks. There's going to be a lot of folks in the Moji community that are there to help. And then basically enjoy the power of Moji Pro. Other things inside of the Moji demo, make sure you read the first readme first and if you go into any of these folders you'll see that he put more readmes. I'm not going to go through every single one. You can do that. Open up the folder, read the readme, see what he's talking about. From this point I'm going to start going into more detail. We're going to, pretty, we're going to do a run from start to finish and you're going to see me do it. You're going to walk through. That way you can have it to help you out. See you in the next video.